Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. To all returning subscribers, I want to say a very big thank you. And if you're just joining me for the very first time, thank you so much. Please, if you've not subscribed to my channel, just hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and guess what, guys? We're about to have a ride of a lifetime. I want to wish you all a happy new year. 2020 was a year. And guess what, guys? We're in 2021, and it's been exciting so far. Four days into the new year, and we have 361 more days to go. I hope you started doing something this year. So now straight to the business of the day. So for those of you who live in social media, I'm sure most of you have heard about the story um, of um, a bank MD, uh, Mr. Adamu Nuru, who's the MD of First City Monument Bank, that's FCMB, and a particular lady called Moyo Thomas, who was um, who had two kids for the bank MD, right? And uh, yes, we didn't know about the story until the husband of that woman actually passed away due to heart failure. So Bruce said it was heartbreak, so Bruce said it was heart failure. But in the long run, it was a heart issue, heart-related issue. So um, I haven't seen quite a number of things that has to do with DNA, that has to do with, um, you know, should men actually do paternity tests for their kids? I mean, when should they do the paternity test? Um, some people are saying, no, no, you shouldn't do the paternity test. You don't trust your woman. Some people are saying, come on, it's important you do it. It's better you know in the early stages of when you have the baby and let us know whether you are, you're actually the rightful owner of the baby or the father of the baby, right? So I want to start with my gist like this. So first of all, I'm just going to give you a lowdown of the story itself. The woman was married to a particular guy called Thomas. Uh, his name is Tuli Thomas. Right? And her name is Moyo. So, I mean, she got married to this guy, and guess what, guys? The first kid wasn't his, the second kid wasn't his. But I think at this point, the whole thing was eating her up, and at a particular point, she decided to say, you know what? I want to take this kid out to the United States for holidays. And when she got to the US, she called to the guy. It was time for this kids to resume school. So the guy was just wondering, why are these kids not back? Babe, what's up? How far? When, when are you and the kids coming back? And the next thing she told him was, you know what? The kids are not yours. They belong to my boss, a bank boss, um, Mr. Adam Onuru. Now, I want to say this, that the banking industry over the years has been known as a place where marketers are given targets that are unrealistic. I'm going to talk about marketers because I think that that's a particular place where, you know, we have a whole lot of things going on. So as a banker back in the days, I don't know if it still happens now, but as a banker, you're giving targets of maybe 10 million naira per month, 20 million naira per month. And most of the time, some ladies, not all of them, but some would do anything because of the rate of unemployment in the country to be able to meet up with this target. But that's by the way. So right now, the guy heard about the story. The guy, when she broke the news to the guy, the guy had partial stroke. He was trying to get himself back. He was trying to get his groove back. And he was even engaged to another lady who wanted to do his introduction. Got back from work um, towards the end of December last year, slumped on, on the staircase, and that was all. Now, I want to say this not all women are bad. There are very good women out there who would not do this to the man they love. I understand the fact that a lot of people are downplaying the issue of love right now, saying that, hey, come on, love does not exist anymore. If you have sex or you have baby, come and check the paternity of the baby. But I want to say this that FCMB at this point is probing. The bank MD is probably Mr. Adam Nuru. And I think that the worst the bank will do is to fire the man. In the long run, he's a boss. If you fire him right now, another bank could get to employ him. And guess what? Since the man is dead, he could decide to marry this lady who has moved to the US with two of his kids. I mean, these kids look yeah, it, it felt like he vomited this kid. These are replicas of himself. I try to understand how the late Mr. Tunde Thomas did not even really recognize the fact that these kids do not look like him. These kids do not look like him. They do not look like his wife. Even though his wife is a bit of light on the light side, I mean, in terms of complexion, they do not look like him. And at this point, right, FCM is propping this man. And of course, whatever FCM comes up with will still not, you know, resolve the issue or wake Mr. Tunde Thomas back because the guy is dead. So that's number one. Now, the other part is the fact that FCMB shares has declined by almost 10%. Starting this with just today, this morning, just early this morning, FCMB shares declined by 10%. So this is also affecting the business of First City Monument Bank. And a lot of people on Twitter clamoring for the fact that, you know, if you have an FCMB account, shut down the account if they do not fire the boss. But that's, by the way, that's just, you know, on an operational and an official level. I want to go straight into the details of the DNA paternity testing. So somebody came up on social media and said, you know what, since churches are making mandatory for people to do HIV testing when you want to get married. They should also make it compulsory for men to do paternity DNA tests before the baby is named. Now, I want to say that this boils down to the issue of trust. Because only you're in a relationship with somebody and you guys have a baby. And, you know, at some point you begin to doubt if you own the baby. That means you're doubting if you actually put the baby there. 
you actually begin to see maybe somebody else is sleeping with your woman. I mean, I'm trying to break it down for you. So it doesn't just, it's not just about, you know, um, I want to do paternity test. It starts from the fact that trust is broken. There's no trust for this woman, but you say you're in love with this woman. Or maybe even in the, in, the, in, the, in the midst of the whole journey of pregnancy and all of that, you're beginning to doubt if you actually own the pregnancy. So I'm telling you the first thing is that trust is lost there because the fact that you're thinking that somebody else is probably sleeping with your woman, I mean, I don't think any man in his right senses wants, you know, to think about the fact that there's another woman in between, there's another man in between this woman's leg. But that's by the way, I'm just saying that first off, trust is missing. Number two, I don't think you should even be with that kind of person. Whether it's as a woman or as a man, if as a woman you begin to perceive that your man is thinking that he doesn't own the child, I don't even think you should also be with that type of man. I mean, that's even if you are also clean on your own part and if the guy is also clean on his own part. But I'm saying that when it comes to the issue of DNA tests, it is a personal thingy. I, for one, personally will not do DNA tests. Why? <clears throat> and then some of you be like, oh, you don't want to do DNA tests. I'm saying that, I'm saying this because when you do the DNA test, I do not even know how you want to look in the face of your partner the following morning. I, see, listen, you do a DNA test, you can never trust the person again. Okay, so I want to ask you a question. What if you do the DNA test and it's faulty? And maybe something went wrong with the DNA test and, and you know, they, they brought out the result and said that, you know what, you do not own the child, whereas you own the child. I am sure that this happened before. And I'm just saying that if you have a faulty DNA test, do you know the amount of damage it will do? The level of distrust it will bring between you and your partner? You're telling Zuma that I do not trust you. Somebody else actually got you pregnant. And what if in the real sense you own the baby? That is number one. Number two is this. Okay, so this comes out, you know, um, you do a DNA test. And it comes out that you, you own the baby. You get what I'm talking about. You own the child. Do you know the level of distrust that will come in between yourself and the woman you claim to love? So I thought we say that once you do a DNA test, is it that you're doing it secretly and your woman doesn't know? Because if she knows, some woman will just break up with you immediately. They're not even going to wait for you to explain why you did the DNA test. I mean, this lady has been opening her legs for you to go in and out as, as much as you want. You guys have a baby and you now begin to doubt the brutality to be sure if you're the father of the baby. I mean, there are rare cases like the, the case of Mr. Tunde Thomas where... The children will not literally look like you. I mean, he's dark-skinned. The children are light-skinned. I mean, he has a bit of, I don't know, the shape of his head, oblong or whatever it is. But the kids look totally different. They don't look like the husband. They don't look like the wife. In those type of scenarios, bro, you can go ahead and do, you know, a DNA test. So point, it's your choice. You want to do a DNA test, be ready for the consequences. If you don't want to do a DNA test, be ready for the consequences. So people will give birth to a child and the child will literally look like them. It feels like... The, the, the man vomited the kids, right? They, they're an exact replica of the father, which is a totally different case. But see, if you do a DNA test, you must have an understanding with your woman. And I doubt if any woman would really have an understanding with you, including the women who are on social media on Twitter shouting that, yes, I should do DNA test. When it boils down to them, how would they also feel? Yes, I understand the fact that a lot is happening right now. A lot of women are pinning children who are not for the men on them. So if you feel that the child is not yours, yes. I mean, if you do the DNA test and it comes out in your favor saying that you're not the owner of the child, you're exonerated, that's fine. I mean, you knew early, you avoided the consequences, you avoided dying early. I mean, you avoided growing old and realizing that you spent so much on kids who are not yours and all of that. But on the other part, if you just want to just jump on the bandwagon and say, yes, I want to do the DNA test for my kids. Your family is going well. Your relationship, even if you're a baby mama, you have a son or whatever it is, your relationship with your woman is going well and you just want to jump on the bandwagon of, yes, I want to do the DNA test for my kids. What if it comes out that you own the kid? You're going to lose the trust of your woman. A lot of things are going to go wrong. Even when she sleeps with you, you won't feel right. Finally, before I leave, I'm going to drop this question. Somebody got on social media and said that men do not need to ask their women before they do DNA tests. Like I said earlier, you want to do it as your personal opinion. You want to do it secretly or you want to talk to your woman. And in the long run, your woman will necessarily trust you. But I want to know what you think in the comment section. Should men ask their women before they do paternity tests? Please go to the comment section and let me know what you think. Thank you so much guys for watching. Please, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, so guess what? You get notified whenever I post a video. To all of you who have been waiting for me to come back on my face on the channel, thank you so much. To everybody who subscribed, I want to say a very big thank you so much. Thank you very much guys for being very supportive. Every week I'm going to drop a video here. And of course, you guys are going to get to see me more often. So um, on this note, I'm going to sign out. Thank you so much, guys. Until next time I come away, I remain your only Femi Dane. Go on all social media platforms and follow me at the Femi Dane. Until next time I come away, that's bye for now.